welcome to How to Yu-Gi-Oh! Deck Profile Virtual Show. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about the new deck that I've made Virtual Show. This is essentially the deck combining Virtual World and Sword Soul. And yeah, so I just want to say like, you know, Virtual World, the how it was before essentially was like... Virtual World consistency is trash, like Dexter's inventions. That's on all four. Okay, with what you see on the screen, you can check out my Virtual Soul deck profile without viewing the deck. So if you just want to see the deck and don't want to hear the talking, you can just look at it. However, if you want to see more, then continue on with the rest of the video. Virtual World, my Hime Lulu. Now, this is one of your starter cards that we're going to be having in Virtual Soul. And I just want to say something. This card is really quite free. I like the word free. Do you know why? It means I can do silly things for no reason. Um, it's one of your freest cards we have in Virtual Soul, as you can special summon it, and it's one of your key cards. Why is this? Let's say, for example, we have um, we're going to be I'm going to be doing something quite unusual in a moment, as I'm, as I'm going to now remove a Virtual Hime and show you their Chuchi. So. You see Chuchi there. So we'll have Virtual World Hime Lulu, as you see there, targeting Chuchi, as I point here, which sends, um, let's just uh, go to the card that we'll send. So we will send uh, King Long, as I've now shown there. So we go from Virtual World Hime, target Chuchi, send King Long, which means you can add any monster but it can also change so let's say you open up with a spell so you activate king long lulu targets king long king long sends chuchi yeah this also means you can add a monster again what if we just have monsters on the board let's say we have Gigi on the board what do we do then if we have a virtual world monster well why are you asking questions? Don't ask questions. We'll have Lulu here targeting Gigi and we'll choose it to send Chuchi, as you can see there, if we just move things along. So Lulu will target Gigi, sending Chuchi, and then you will add Kowloon, as I will show right there. So we will have Virtual World Gigi. So Virtual Gigi is a level 3, and this is going to be your recursion card. Why is that the case? Because while it's on the field, you're going to be using its hand effect, right, in order to send target a virtual card. So you'll target, you'll target the uh, Chuchi, as we show there, or it could be any virtual monster. It could be a Virtual World Maihime uh, Lulu, as we show there. So, yeah, with those targets that you're going to be targeting, that's how it's going to be. So you'll send that to the graveyard, activate its, um, well, obviously, that's the hand effect you're doing, yeah? Activate its effect, special summon it, and then, in the end phase, you'll be able to add any virtual world monster except itself. Betting back Lolo is the correct answer. Virtual world Roshi Lao Lao. So this is the card. Again, you're going to activate that hand effect targeting the Chuchi, which will be face up on the board. Um... Or it could be a uh, King Long, depending on your board state. When nothing ruins the game plan. Targeting a monster in the graveyard. So if you target um, Lily, you're going to be going into a straight rank 6 summon. If you target Gigi, you're going to be going to a straight synchro uh, 9 summon. And... If you've and if you've revived, uh, if of all things included, you revived a level three, and you'll also revive Nyan Nyan, and things will should go and spiral from there. But in terms of that, Lao Lao is going to be your card that's going to facilitate your plays, 
going to combo wombos, going to synchro nines, synchro sixes, as I've shown, the cards you're more likely to summon, and so on and so forth. You know, Virtual World, Kirin Lili. This is a card again I found that at two is perfect. At two is the best number for this job. At one, I really don't want it at one, especially in Virtual Soul, because it feels like it's not enough. At three, it just feels bricky. My, the deck starts to brick, and it's not really good. I found at two is just the right ratio when mixing Virtual World and Sword Soul. I found that two, for me anyways, is the right ratio. And so our last main deck Virtual World monster is Virtual World Hime Nyan Nyan. So I found one is the perfect um, solution. Now if you're playing pure Virtual World, then definitely you're going to play it at two. But when we're mixing it, I found two is a bit too much. It's just... It, the deck starts to break it just it wasn't working for me it really didn't work for me with the fusion i found just having one was just enough it it recurs enough because it special summons itself when uh, level three is normal or special summoned onto your side of the board it becomes a tutor when it revives itself from its own effect in grave and allows you to return any banished card whether it's face down as well so you know desires fans Wow, it's fantastic, great. Another card that you can uh, put in Virtual Soul, I believe, is, uh, you know, Pot of Desires. But oh no, lost my cards through banishment. It is a shame I can't return them. Sword Soul of Mo Yi. Sword Soul, the new power of the Chosen. So Sword Soul of Mo Yi is a level four worm monster. So its effect to get you a. Uh, Sword Soul token, you're going to need to reveal a Worm Monster, as I showcased there, or a Sword Soul card, as I've showcased right now. So you do that, and then once you've done that, you'll get yourself, uh, let's just move that, to get a Sword Soul token. We'll use that Aluba there, uh, the Aluba token, to, we'll class that as a Sword Soul token, which is a Water Worm, which will allow you to then Synchro Summon into... Uh, you know, if you're going first, because this is definitely a card you're going to be using going first, for sure. It's going to be your normal summon, which will be uh, Sword Soul uh, Chi Zhao, as we can see right there. Anyways, let's move, let's remove those away, and go back to putting it back to three. So anyways, those are the effects you're going to be doing with Sword Soul Mo Yi. And also remember, there'll be a chain link one and two. So, how will it work? So let's obviously do some demonstrations here, but let's remove those uh, Sword Soul Mo Ye's. So you'll have Mo Ye, right? Let's reveal our Worm Monster, so we'll reveal Mo Ye. Get ourselves a token, which is there, the token, Sword Soul token. You will then Synchro Summon, putting those away, to get you uh, your Sword Soul uh, Chi Zhao, as you see there. So then there'll be Chain Link 1, Chain Link Two, as you as I vibrated there, so two activates because it Moye has been used as part of a synchro summon. You will uh, get to draw. So we just threw something for no reason. That means you'll get to add any sort of card from the deck to you. There are no limits to the power of this card. Probably gonna be adding either sort of emergence, depending on your hand. I could be a Moye as well, or you could even add. A blackout if we're feeling fu funky Break it. but what are the cards you're most likely to add so your most likely targets that you're going to be adding with Chi Zhao with this combo with Mo Yi are going to be Emergence and Long Yuan and your third cop and your other copy being Blackout Sword Soul Strategist Long Yuan so this is the card that you're going to be adding with your Sword Soul emergence right um outside of that um either you've drawn it in your hand added it with emergence or added it with the help of sword soul um grandmaster chija restriction is stronger than prevention its effect as it states there you can pitch a worm monster showcasing a worm or a sword soul card showcase sword soul Moye, to get you a token so let's remove those two there and use a luba there 
to be our sort of uh, token. So then we will then go into a synchro summit, obviously, and then you would synchro summit into Baron de Fleur right there. You do so, meaning you deal your opponent 1200 points of damage. The other synchros you're going to be going into, most likely, are going to be, let's have a look at this and what other stuff, crazy stuff, you will be able to go into, remove that aside. Your other options are Sword Soul Supreme Sovereign, there. Uh, the other option is we zoom in. Uh, there, let's put it there. Sword Soul Sinister Sovereign Kijing Longyon. And that's pretty much it. Let's move those aside and go back to putting Long Yuan, Strategist Long Yuan, on the board. And we put those there. So that's essentially it. The Sword Soul of Tyre. I found playing two is the best. Two is the best number for this job. Three is a bit bricky sometimes, and it feels like I really don't need it. Um, so also Mo Yi and Long, uh, strategist Long Yuan are enough to fulfill their roles. Uh, this is just a card that you usually I usually want to discard with uh, so so Long Yuan. It's not really. It comes up. Uh, its effect does come up. You know, when you use for synchro summon to send any worm from uh, deck. To graveyard. This is really good to be sending, um, you know, my virtual world monsters, deck thinning the deck, so that I can add them back to the hand with virtual world Gigi's effect. Virtual world city Kowloon. Fading hand traps is the correct answer. So this is one of your great starters in virtual world. Not only is this card a great uh, hand trap target, you know, for Ash Blossom or stuff like that. Um, this is what's going to allow you to set up your. Um, of, uh, virtual world plays to then mean that you don't need to normal summon your virtual world uh, main deck monsters. World Gate King Long. So Virtual Gate King Long is going to be your main playmaker for your virtual world half of Virtual Soul. This is what you're going to use to add yourself your your key cards, your virtual world Lulu, Gigi, Lili and Lao Lao is going to be added with this card if you haven't added it already with the virtual world uh, Lulu. To infinity and all those. Great card, virtual world gate Chu Chi. So this is the card that you're going to be using a lot. Now I remember I mentioned um, virtual world uh, so and so Chi Zhao sorry from the extra deck. So this is the card that you're going to be using to be popping your opponent's cards and disrupting them on their turn. Breaking things is all you're good for. One of the ways you're going to be doing this is by having King Long and Chu Chi in Graveyard banished. Another way is that on your opponent's turn, you can activate the effect of Sword Soul Chi Xiao, banish a Virtual World Monster, which will happen to be a Worm. We'll get to that in the extra deck section. And you will be able to have, and if you do it correctly, you'll be able to have two Virtual World cards banished, meaning that Chuche will be live on your opponent's turn. There's just so many ways you can make this live on your opponent's turn. Sword Soul Emergence. This card is gonna be a lifesaver, especially when it's in your hand turn one. Baiting Hand Traps is the correct answer. Not only is it a great Ash or Hand Trap target, um, it's one of those cards that is really going to be helpful to you to add you a virtual card or to add you a sword soul card. It's the bridge to both of your of the archetypes in this deck. Sword soul how many things were moving center and natural. Add one sword soul monster from your deck to your hand. Or, if you control a synchro monster, you can add one worm monster instead. If this card is banished, you can target one sword soul monster or worm monster you control, increase or decrease its level by one. Until the end of this turn, you can only use each effect of sword soul emergence once per turn. That's a bit much, don't you think? So that effect of being able to add any worm when you control a synchro is really applicable, especially with your virtual world side. So usually how this how it pertains, you know, to this card in the combo that you make. You'll start with a virtual world sword soul combo, not fully commit, and then go into 
the sword so um, combo you know add this card to your hand or if it's in your starting hand that's just great synchro summon you know some virtual world cards commit 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 and lo and behold you've made a really nice board i've been caught in a deadly combo from which there's no escape you've got a card that can add anything from your deck uh to your hand you need to calm down with that i really like in this deck and you just play it at three you can't play less of it it's either three or you go home the truth you need to know sword soul blackout so this is the last sword soul uh trap in virtual soul so anyways i found that having two of this card is just right two is the best number for this job because having more than two tends to lead to being a brick emergency teleport at three being at three it's just a staple it's mandatory if you are playing any kind of virtual world mashup you're gonna have to have emergency teleport at three the truth you need to know and here we have our final three cards making it a 40 card deck reasoning reasoning is a really good card i feel in virtual and virtual soul not only uh does it is it effective because even if they guess three you'll still be able to special summon a uh, sword soul monster so it's sort of like you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't whatever level your opponent su uh, uh, chooses you are guaranteed to summon something unless they hit it with a hand trap obviously it's free real estate it's a great extender, a great card to start your play. So it's a starter card and it's as well a card that you could draw off of multiple things. We have Cold by the Grave. I mean, not much can be said by Cold by the Grave. It's a great way to stop hand traps. It's just a really good card overall. You're going to be seeing it in a lot of decks. So yeah, Cold by the Grave is just a staple. Not much to be said about that. We have Instant Fusion to get ourselves that Millennium Eyes Restrict to be stopping uh, those hand traps as those hand traps can be quite deadly okay so we're going to be going to our first row of extra deck we have millennium eyes restrict number 75 bamboozling gossip shadow and constella Ptolemy m7 so first let's talk about millennium's eyes restrict a uh, millennium's eyes restrict you're going to be special summoning that off of the instant fusion which i showed in the main deck part of uh, this video so that's going to be helping you to deal with hand traps such as ash blossom effect veiler dimension shifter and the draw and lock bird possibly and the list goes on maybe even token collector who knows but yeah so loads of things that you can stop there we have uh Number 75, Bamboozling Gossip Shadow. So this is another card again that we're going to be making to be stopping those pesky hand traps and those pesky monster effects if we need to or if we need to go even further. And then we have Constella Portelami M7. Now this is a card that I like in a Virtual Soul, especially I was using it in Virtual World because this allows you to have the recursion back. Along with the effect of Gigi that's in the, our main deck, this allows us again to have at our end phase, you know, have two cards in our, you know, two cards we've added from the graveyard to our hand, you know, possibly Potelemy M7, we can add another card as well. And we have a way to repeat our same turn, the next turn, and the turn after that, and the turn after that. It's always my turn. Okay, and so our next uh, row of, of, uh, of extra deck monsters is we have, as you see there, Stardust Charge Warrior, Virtual World QB Chen Chen, and Baron de Fleur. So first, let's start with Charge Warrior. Charge Warrior is a simple, you know, plus one. Um, when in Synchro Summon, you just get to draw one card. Very nice. It's a, uh, it's a level six. So you can definitely use it for those uh, rank six plays, or you can go into the Shen Shen or other uh, things that we want to go into in our virtual soul so we can do many things you can't even think of which usually are the shen shen and finally we have the baron de fleur there when nothing ruins the game plan okay so here we come to our sword soul part of the extra deck we play two sword soul grandmaster xi zhao and one sword soul supreme sovereign cheng ying 
Now, why do we play two Qi Zhao? Two is the best number for this job. Now, I found three Qi Zhao is not really ideal. Uh, we don't have space in the extra deck. Extra deck space is tight, unfortunately, with Virtual Soul. And I find uh, you don't really ever need to go into three. Two is just right. It's It just works. So let's look at Qi Zhao and the main card that's going to be really facilitating most of your plays and the card that you're going to be going into most of the time. Um, the second other card is going to be uh, Stardust Charge Warrior. But anyways, with uh, Sword Soul Grandmaster Qi Zhao, so when it's Synchro Summon, you can add any Sword Soul card from your deck. So this is You the, need to calm down with that. This is the card that you're going to be using to add yourself the Sword Soul Emergence, which is going to open up your Virtual Soul a bit more. Emergence, Emergence is going to add you any Worm Monster because you control a Synchro Monster. So the whole world is open in your deck. You have endless possibilities. If you already have Sword Soul Emergence in the hand, you're going to be definitely adding Blackout so that you have a uh, pop. So usually your end boards are going, your turn boards are going to have Qi Zhao on the board, Possibly a Shen Shen, you'll have set their uh, face up a Chu Chi, um, added a blackout. So on your opponent's turn, you're going to be able to, you'll possibly have a King Long banished, activate Chi Zhao's effect, banish a virtual monster in your graveyard, so you'll get to the gate a face up card. And not only will you do that, but you'll also make Chu Chi live. So you'll do two things at the same time. So you'll get, so one the gate turns into a pop as well. So you'll have a negate and a pop on your opponent's turn. I mean, what more can we say about that? And so let's talk about our star uh, Sword Soul Master, which is Sword Soul Supreme Sovereign Cheng Ying. So this is a card again that, let's read that effect. For each banished card, this card gains 100 attack and defense, and monsters your opponent controls lose 100 attack and defense. Now, this is only going to be viable for you if you are going to be playing Desires, as that attack and reduction boost is going to matter, especially if Desires is your main. So it can be, Cheng Ying can be a very beefy boy. I do not play Desires in uh, this in my version of Virtual Soul, but if you are playing Desires, then definitely Cheng Ying, maybe you'll be bumping that up to two in your deck. But the effect that we like about this is that um, if a card is banished, you can banish so if this card will be destroyed by card effect, you can banish one card from your graveyard instead. We are in the driver's seat. We decide who lives or dies. Again, this is a great way to keep your uh, virtual, get your virtual true chain live. And let's read its other effect. So you can banish one card from both of your opponent's field and graveyard. You can only use uh, the effect of Soul Soul Supreme Sovereign Cheng Ying once per turn. So how is other effect being uh, activated? This effect is activated when any card on either side of the field is banished. So, yeah. Right, and here we have our last three cards in our extra deck. We have Sword Soul Sinister Sovereign Xi Jing Long Yuan, Hot Red Dragon Arch Fiend Abyss, and Muddy Mud Dragon. So let's first start off with our left with Sword Soul Sinister Sovereign Jing Kijing Long Yuan. So this is your Synchro 10 that you're going to uh, be making sometimes, not all the time. Restriction is stronger than prevention. When you are wanting to win in time or you want to be dealing with those pesky floodgates. Why is that the case? So, let's read its effect. If you synchro summon another word monster, so it could include your Sword Soul Grandmaster Qi Zhao, or your uh, Sword Soul Sovereign, Supreme Sovereign Cheng Ying, you'll get to draw a card. So we just drew something for no reason. So anytime you synchro summon a word monster, you just draw a card. Like, fantastic card. Fantastic. A machine opponent special summons a monster except during the damage tap. You can banish one of those monsters. You need to calm down with that. So non-target banish. Wow, great, uh, great effect already. And if you do inflict 1,200 uh, damage to your opponent, so you're already dealing some burn. And and it's and we have another effect as well. Your opponent activates a spell or trap, or effect, quick effect. You can banish that card, and if you do inflict 1,200 points of damage, so in a turn you can deal your opponent 2,400 points of damage. When nothing ruins the game plan. 
By simply special summoning a monster, you deal them damage. You banish it because it's non-target banishment. Um, so none of that, none of that nonsense of you can't be targeted. No, it's non-target banish, and simply remove that card away, and you just deal them 1,200. Great card, great way to just get rid of problematic monsters, and that's about it. So let's talk about Hot Red Dragon Archfiend Abyss. So how are we making this? We're making this with the card that you see on your right-hand side, or to the far right, which is Muddy Mud Drag, Muddy Mud Dragon. So, obviously, as you can see, it's a materials. There's one tuner plus one non tuner dark dragon synchro monster. And we're going to be making that by synchro summoning a Muddy Mud Dragon, which is synchro six. You'll definitely be using that E Telly, which you're going to be having in your hand most of the time, or if you've opened absolutely nuts or cracked. And you're going to be synchro summoning that. So, it's a face up, um, you know, negate with abyss. And when it deals battle damage, you can special summon any tuner from your graveyard back onto the board. This means we have recursion. We can special summon back our virtual world uh, Lulu from our grave or any other tuner like a Lao Lao to go into, you know, um, synchro play, XYZ play and further shenanigans that you can think of as you play. And that's about it. And so that's our extra deck. And so finally, let's go into our nice and my spicy side deck. Okay, so now we're going to be talking about these three cards in our side deck. Fairy Knight Iguana, number 24 Dragulus, the Vampiric Dragon, and Virtual World Phoenix Fan Fan. So first of all, let's talk about Fairy Knight Iguana. So this is a card that we're going to have, especially it's going to be useful to get rid of those uh cards that have floodgates on the board one of the things i like about fairy knight iguana is that its effect cannot be stopped the moment you activate its effect it has a super poly um, clause meaning that you can't activate any cards in response to its effect so the moment it resolves everything is returned onto your side of the field great card great card that just shuff that just clears the board for removal and you can put um gaia thunder charge on top of it in order to make divine arsenal zeus and then we have dragulus the vampiric dragon this is another card that's really good that's a book of moon because it's a nice rank six that you can make place your opponent's monsters face down and it also is quite interesting as we can see there with its effect stating that even if it is uh flipped uh face if this card is flipped face up from face down you can send one card on the field to the graveyard so it's really really cool if it's if it's managed to be uh, to be placed face down with a book of moon or something like that is that it can send a card from the field to the graveyard non-targeting removal who doesn't like a card like that? And then we have a Virtual World Phoenix Fan Fan. So with Fan Fan there, it's a great um, Virtual World XYZ that is in our side deck and could be useful if we're going into that mirror match and we need more Virtual World cards. We need more stuff to clear the board. Has a nice effect there. Okay, let's move on. Okay, so we have this part of our side deck as well, Dragon Lark Pyron, Lightning Road Lord, and Artifact Scythe. So Dragon Lark Pyron is going to be used in conjunction with Beatrice so that you can special summon the scythe to extra deck lock your opponent. Um, the other card you're going to be using as well will be Lightning Road Lord. Uh, this could be useful, it could be useful in that... Um, spell matchup especially if you don't want to be losing against decks that rely on spells a lot uh, so definitely is this a stalling uh, tactic and it could be could be useful but definitely it's not my be all or end all it's part of the spice but it's just there for now it's definitely a card that i'm going to be removing in the future um in the side deck it's just there just you know to fill that space but do not be mistaken, do not be fooled. It's just there because there's no other really great target at the moment I can find for that. The next 
two cards that I'll be showing in the side deck that I'm using are the cards I'm going to be summoning more often than not with the Beatrice and Pyron combo, apart from Scythe. Let's move on. Okay, and so we have these cards. Now, these are the cards that we're going to be using quite a lot, especially an Invader of Darkness. So, this is a, Invader of Darkness is a card we're going to be using against that uh, branded matchup. If it ever does come up, we're we're definitely weak. Uh, don't don't be fooled against the branded matchup. Things are not looking good for us in that branded matchup. Why is that? For one simple reason is that they rely on quick plays. Um, quick plays are one of the quick play spells. Is you only have one of it in your deck in virtual. So, however, with decks like branded. They use quick plays all the time. Did you know that Super Poly is a quick play? Crossed Out Designator is a quick play. Forbidden Droplet is a quick play. Branded in Red, you guessed it, is a quick play. And let's look at the effect of Invader of Darkness. As it says there, as long as this card remains face up on the field, your opponent cannot activate a quick play spell card. This is significant. This means you can activate your own quick play spell cards like Call by the Grave or Cross Out, but they can't activate theirs. Very good. And it's definitely a card I'm thinking, of, um, thinking about, really, for that branded matchup. Um, so, sounds, sounds legit. And so we have here the End of Anubis. That's another card that, you know, we have there for our side deck there, really. And really, it's a card that we're going to be using against graveyard-centric decks. Well, yes, it does hurt um, my deck as well, the, the Virtual Soul deck as well. Sometimes you do need to sacrifice something in order to stall your opponent. There, there are times when you need to hurt yourself sometimes to hurt your opponent. Um, because the graveyard is becoming the second, uh, the second deck now. And sometimes it is important to stop your opponent as much as possible and stop them doing things in the graveyard if it gets to that point. Okay, and finally, let's go to the last three cards in my side deck. Okay, and here are the last three cards I'll be having in my side deck. This is Chronomaly Atlantis, Chronomaly Chaos Atlantis, and the Chaos Rank Up Magic Argent Chaos. Why will I have these three cards? For one simple thing, to win in time. Um, one of the things that we uh, virtual virtual soul doesn't have really is the time. Sometimes we have time rules, and the fact that we have a number x y uh, x y z in the deck, which is gossip shadow, very easy to make. We can make it, and you can just win in time. Halve your opponent's life points and just win. The goal of Chronopoly Atlantis is to win your games in time in that match too. Maybe we just don't have enough time. Uh, maybe we just can't go full combo wombo. But we can definitely half your opponent's life points. Yes, we don't get to battle, but that is not the point here. The point here is to try to win in time and to try and just burn your opponent as quickly as possible. And the best thing about this card, uh, the best thing about Columbia Atlantis, because it halves the opponent, its effect is of halving and of and with Cro Chaos Columbia Atlantis, it makes your opponent's life points a 100, I believe. If we can uh, look there, if we have the Chaos, um, if we have the Columbia Atlantis as overlay material there, this basically means it's not classed as effect damage. So any, so if your opponent has effect, uh, has uh, has a way, is usually is trying to counter it by by you know saying that you know it is to negate effect damage. It's not classed as effect damage as you just make as with Chromium Atlantis. You half your opponent's life points. It's a monster effect. The same thing with Chromium Atlantis. This is quite rare for Yu-Gi-Oh monster to have, and it's one of the reasons why I have it. Like you know, pretty much. And that's pretty much it. We come to the end of this video. So, as I like to say, you are one step closer 
to come in a Yu-Gi-Oh! Master. My fate, right, is in your hands. 